This is Sam Tribble. Welcome to Street Tumbling. Today we're going to be going over the standing back tuck. We're going to show you a technique and things to work on as far as prerequisite so that you know that you're ready to do a standing back tuck. And one of the first things that we're going to do is just look at a plyometric jump. The first thing you're going to notice is I'm not going to run up to the stairs and then jump. I'm just going to do it from a stand and so it's like a very ballistic jump and a stair, a stairs are a great way and a great place to work on your dynamics. So we'll just start from a stand make it up a few steps and see if we can just keep increasing that number on up the stairs. This is going to naturally help you learn to coordinate your legs and your arms and then slowly in, in increments go ahead and improve that dynamics. Yeah, I would say a great place to go from there is after you make your first step Try to make them up as few steps as possible. Making it too. Nice. Nice. Excellent. So the key component here is once we land and then we're absorbing all that impact in our, in our legs and our body and then we're transferring it without taking extra steps or stumbling or anything like that. So we're really learning how to use our um, our body efficiently. All right, jumping vertical is actually a little bit different from uh, gaining, getting distance, but if we transfer some of that distance into vertical lift, just find something that you're comfortable with so you can coordinate the arms and the legs, that you should be able to make it up pretty easily. The goal is gonna be, for your standing back tuck, to be able to make it up to something that's close to waist height. So really what we're looking at, just for general basic dynamics, if I'm going to work with an athlete that says they want to do a standing back tuck, this is one of the first things I'll look at because he's able to generate enough force to get at least enough vertical lift that he can get up on top of here. But one of the very important factors about this as a fundamental drill for a standing back tuck is I already know that he's conditioned well enough with his arms and his body, his coordination, to make it to something that is at least hip height. And this is, this is beyond that, far beyond. And, but it also tells me he's able to, to quickly contract his legs to help that vertical lift because if the legs and the muscles are slow or not responding or they're just not developed yet, he might be able to get the lift on the initial jump. But then there's an equal and opposite reaction when he picks his legs up. If, he's, if he just stays in one place, he's not going to be able to get them up. So the arms and the legs and the lift are all coordinated um, quickly enough and tight enough that he can actually get his feet up to here. That's far more than he needs to do a standing back tuck. So I already know when working with my athlete, if they can do this, I've got all the tools I need to work with as far as dynamics. Now it's just a matter of teaching technique. It's really nice to rule that out in the beginning because if you start spotting someone that's not strong enough, then uh, you're always going to be having to spot them. So I already know as long as he understands the technique, he's actually capable of doing that back tuck today, even if he doesn't even know how to do it for the first time. Okay, as a spotter, the first thing you want to do is basically figure out um, proportionally where I'm going to need to be to be able to spot Drew. Obviously, Drew's uh, larger than me, which is not uh, necessarily a bad thing at all because, in fact, in some senses, it makes it easier than working with a small athlete. Because that small athlete, you're going to have to be strong enough to either rotate him here, but Drew's actually tall enough that if he gets his minimum amount of jump, he's going to be up at my shoulder and it's much easier to support someone up here to help them with rotation and controlling their hips. So it doesn't really matter the size of the athlete that you're working with. Um, you'll be able to, you're capable of spotting them or helping them as long as you understand the mechanics and knowing how to control the hips. If you can control the hips, then you can control the majority of their body and of course keep them off their head. First thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna work on a few jumps. And this is important because he's gonna get comfortable with what I'm doing. So we're just gonna stand here. We're just doing a straight jump and I'm standing behind you. Excellent, so that was great. Now what I want you to do is jump up and back. So when you're in the air, go ahead and lean back into me for a second. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have some of his weight and supporting you in the, wear, in the air just a little bit and I'll set you back down. Okay, go ahead, jump up and back. Good, now that initial push was you leaning into me. Jump up and get it to go back into me because you're reaching over me, like you're jumping over me. That was better, good, let's do that again. Good. When I gave you a little bit of resistance, you started to go forward, so you need to jump up and over me a little bit more. That was a perfect one. 
So now you notice when I started off, I wanted to have control of Drew. I wasn't sure what he was going to do exactly. My hand started off a little bit closer to his hips. Once he started to figure out the jump and got confident with me back there, knowing that I was actually going to support him, he was able to jump up a little bit harder in a nice set for a back tuck. But you'll notice what I did that time was I moved my hands closer to his upper back because had he done a really good one, he really would have started rotating over. So let's do one more just like the last one. Okay. That was awesome. So that's gonna be a really high back tuck. What I'm gonna do now though, because I want him to know what it feels like to facilitate rotation, I'm gonna get on something a little bit higher and we're gonna go back to our steps, our natural resources. So now I get a little mechanical advantage because he's gonna have to work a little bit harder in order to be able to get to the same height. So I want you to just do the same exact jump and then I'm gonna set you right back down to the ground. Perfect, so that was really easy for me. What I want you to do now is jump up and over me. Okay. Put it in a little bit closer. And this time bring your knees up towards your chest. Okay. Good, bring them straight up. Bring them straight up? Yep, just like you're doing the back okay. foot. Bring it up and over me, bring the knees up. You'll feel it start to rotate, and then I'll set you back down. Okay. Good, it's gotta be faster. Faster? Gotta go. There's no way you can go up and okay. over me because I'm uh, I'm on steps here. Up and over. That's perfect. That's the one you're looking for. When they're doing that, he goes up freely and begins that rotation before he ever lands on my shoulder. So right there I know, if I weren't there and I were actually assisting his flip, he would just go right over. Let's do that again. One more. That's good. If you're looking for tumbling, looking for a strong foundation, and you don't know where to start, you're an adult, a lot of gyms don't have classes specifically, they have open gyms, but maybe not something with um, instruction where you can get a foundation. I'm at the San Diego Circus Center three days a week, so you're welcome to come on down and, and we'll have a great session.